I was 18 years old, went into military intelligence, and went to the Marine Corps ball where I was sexually assaulted. After reporting the rape, my entire career in the military went from excelling and on an extremely promising path to ultimately being discharged with a personality disorder. The military has recently undertaken reforms to improve protections for those who report sexual assault or sexual harassment. The problem is nothing has been done for the thousands of service members in the past who were wrongfully discharged after they reported their sexual assault. Had I not come forward with any sort of sexual harassment, there would have been absolutely no investigation, so therefore I would have stayed in service. There would have been no discharge, it wouldn't have led to that. We spoke to over 160 sexual assault or sexual harassment survivors, many of whom received bad discharges and are still feeling the impact of those discharges even years after they left service. I had been sexually assaulted several times. I, I couldn't take it no more. And I knew the ship was getting ready to leave, so I went AWOL. I was not gonna go out to sea with these men and deal with this every single day. As soon as the ship left, I turned myself in immediately. The ultimate, and was my lawyer asked me, do you want to be in the military? I, I told him yes. Well, I still want to be in. He says, well, they won't transfer you. He goes, the other option is you're going to have to get out. I said, okay, what, what's this mean? He says, well, you're going to get an other than honorable discharge, and I would be off the ship, and I wouldn't be near these attackers no more. 85% of characterized discharges are honorable, so having a discharge other than honorable is a big red flag. The thing about military discharges is that they can have a terrible stigmatizing effect. A bad paper discharge can't be the equivalent of a life sentence. This is my uh, discharge paperwork, which they call a DD-214, even though it says that I served honorably. Having the personality disorder discharge, it's changed and impacted my life in more ways than I can probably even count. It's impacted job opportunities. And although I'm probably one of the lucky ones in the fact that I have an honorable discharge, right next to where it says honorable, it says personality disorder. A personality disorder is a mental health condition that typically arises in adolescence and disqualifies you from military service. For years, labeling someone with a personality disorder was the fastest way to get someone out of the military. And the narrative for the code says personality disorder, so that would Thousands of people were discharged without proper procedures being followed and without proper medical diagnosis. For many of these people, they were dismissed with less than two years of service, which makes them ineligible for benefits. I lost my education benefits. I lost medical benefits, any type of uh, military sexual trauma support groups, there was none of that. So I was trying to get help for work, and I was told that they couldn't help me because of my discharge. That's when I started learning more about other than honorable discharges. Um, you're not eligible for anything. You, you don't get help for nothing. <laughs> and the more and more I learned, the more and more disgusted I got, and the more and more I went downhill. It was hard to go to employers and say, hey, I was an outstanding officer but they look at my papers and it says misconduct and I didn't receive it honorable. Thousands of victims were wrongfully discharged, but nothing has been done to correct their discharges. The Department of Defense response has been to refer people who believe that they were unjustly discharged to the boards for correction of military records or the discharge review boards. But in fact, the likelihood of success before those boards is next to nothing. The reason I went to the Discharge Review Board was to upgrade my discharge. When I was there, I immediately sat down and it was as if I was a criminal. It was, they didn't review the case the way that we had presented it. They just believed that there was misconduct. And actually, many times, they just asked me very condescending questions. Well, in Emily's case, it's the only time that I've ever appeared before a Discharge Review Board. When we got in there, I found myself being cut off and my client being screamed at on this horrible interrogation which is completely at odds with the Army's stated policy that at all levels a complainant in a sexual harassment instance is never to be the person that's investigated. We got a decision a few months later that was erroneous in a number of different respects and it was a 5 nothing decision not to upgrade. Most cases, and I'm talking about 
like 99% plus of the cases before the correction boards are decided simply as a paperwork exercise in which any individual case may get only minutes of consideration by the board. The boards for correction almost never have hearings. The Navy board, for example, hasn't held a hearing in decades. Honestly, it, it's, it's mind baffling. How can you not realize this guy's being sexually assaulted. Look at all these pages, documents proving it, doctors saying it, mental health providers, even the command is saying it. But yet you're going to uh, not give him an upgrade so he can get benefits, so he can get correct help? Every one of us that has gone through being sexually assaulted and then dishonored and being discharged illegally, we were denied the due process. That is unacceptable because there's other people that have the same discharge that are committing suicide, that turn to drugs and alcohol. And frankly, I'm at the point where it's like, I, d I don't believe that they care about us until they start fixing this problem. Given that the stakes are so high for people with bad discharges, it's incredibly important that they have an opportunity to be heard and that the boards are a meaningful avenue of review for these cases. If I would have been able to sit in front of that board and explain my actions, explain what happened to me, so they can connect and understand why I went AWOL, why I missed ship's movement, they would know it was because I was scared for my life. They would know it was because I was being sexually assaulted. They would know because I was doing things that no human should not, should, shouldn't have to do.